Test, test. All right, uh, welcome everybody. Um, this is the Nutanix presentation at the Marketplace Theater. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about Nutanix, please come sit down. Uh, my name is Lucas Lundell, and I am the uh, Global Director of Solutions at Nutanix. Uh, so I run a team of individuals that writes our best practices, reference architectures uh, for any solutions that uh, our customers use, whether it's SQL, uh, SAP, Oracle, uh, VDI, um, and general server virtualization. Uh, I want to start off with uh, a little bit about my background. Um, before Nutanix, I was actually a, a data center architect, and I designed data centers for the federal government and uh, financial services companies with Accenture. I worked in their uh, research and development lab. A um, bit more about Nutanix. Today we have over 1,750 customers. Uh, we have appliances in 70 countries. And our team has grown to over 1,100 employees. And this is just in the last four years that we've been selling a product. So we've, we've seen, a, seen some very fast growth in the last four years. We also um, are very proud of our net promoter score. So net promoter score is customer satisfaction for your support team. So we have a, over a 91 uh, net pr promoter score, which is highest in the industry. So this is uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant um, for integrated systems. Uh, Nutanix was placed as a leader in the Gartner Magic, Magic Quadrant this year. Um, and, and it's actually the farthest right company. So um, it's great recognition from the industry and the growth that we've seen from Gartner. So we're very happy with that. And there's actually a Gartner Symposium this week in Tokyo as well. So we're very excited to be participating in both of these events. Now, what does Nutanix actually do? Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with our product. Um, in, in obviously a, a normal standard enterprise virtualization environment, you would normally have three types of gear. You'd have your servers, your compute, your st storage area network, or your um, physical IP network, Ethernet network. And then you have your storage, whether it's a NAS or, SA or, or SAN appliance. Now, you manage each of these pieces of gear separately. They're usually produced by different companies. You're responsible for ensuring you're running the right versions of code, uh, BIOS, uh, any software or firmware that runs at every layer. And it's very difficult to scale. So as you, need, as you fill up a, an existing storage array, you have to buy a new one. Now, what we've done is we've taken all the intelligence of a centralized storage array and built it into a distributed software system. So we have our own distributed file system that we sell as an appliance, as a building block for the data center. And the reason that we did this is, you know, we look at the data centers of companies like Amazon and Google, uh, Microsoft. There's no such thing. Most of these data centers, they don't have centralized storage arrays. They run software on commodity x86 hardware. And that's what we've done. We've taken that intelligence of the storage array and baked it into a distributed file system for enterprise virtualization. Now, what do we actually sell? So we have, we have an array of different appliances. Each appliance has compute, and it has storage. It has memory. Um, so we use two different types of disks on every appliance. So we have SSDs and HDDs. And our software is intelligent enough to auto-tier data between those, those SSDs and HDDs, depending on frequency of access and what data is the hottest. There's also an in-memory read cache. Now, this single appliance, it does all the storage, uh, the storage uh, pooling. So you, you add more appliances, it's able to pull all that storage together and present it to whatever hypervisor that you want to use. So we support uh, VMware ESX, we support Hyper-V, and we also support uh, KVM. Now, on each of these appliances, on each of the nodes in a cluster, we run our software as a virtual machine. That virtual machine has access to the SSDs and the HDDs, 
and those virtual machines communicate with each other to form the distributed file system. And on top of that file system, we present it to the hypervisor and however, using whatever mechanism uh, that makes sense for each hypervisor. For VMware, we use NFS to present that pool. Uh, for Hyper-V, we use SMB protocol. And for KVM, we actually use iSCSI. So depending on which hypervisor we're using, we're presenting that pool of storage uh, to the hypervisor in a different way. But on the back end, it's all managed and controlled by our distributed file system. And this is, this, these are a couple of our uh, enterprise customers' data centers here. What's nice about our solution is you don't have three different types of gear to manage anymore. You have a single building block that scales out. As you want to add more compute or storage capacity, you simply add more nodes. And uh, you know we've had some great success here. Some of the customers uh, are customers of ours in every industry. Um, but I want to move on and talk a little bit more about what we're doing with OpenStack. And then also answer any questions that you guys have about our solution. So on top of uh, the KVM hypervisor in part particular, we've actually built our own management stack. And this management stack runs on the same distributed system as our file system. So we have our own hypervisor management capability that allows you to create VMs. It allows you to create uh, storage, st store files for these VMs, do snapshots, deduplication, compression, uh, high availability. So if, if a host fails, allow those v VMs to start on another host. Uh, motion, uh, so if you're trying to move VMs between hosts, it supports all those capabilities. Now, uh, we also have customers who are very interested in using OpenStack and a lot of the advantages that OpenStack provides. Uh, things like the easy to use interface with Horizon, uh, some of the networking capabilities with Neutron, uh, users and quota management, uh, single sign-on. So what we've done is we've integrated our Acropolis technology with the OpenStack services. And how did we go about do that? Or why did we, why, first, first of all, why did we go about doing that? Uh, a couple of the key reasons is our, our file system ha has many f pieces of functionality that haven't quite been implemented. Things like auto tiering, so flash and HTD auto tiering. Things like VM data locality. So when you're running VMs on a Nutanix system, the data for a VM, I even if you're using something like Cinder, um, you're actually using NDFS on the back end. And it, it allows the data for each VM to sit on the flash tier local to that VM. And in the background, we're also replicating that data to a different node. So unlike Amazon uh, EBS and you know, native implementations, we have the concept of VM data locality. And we've seen that uh, reduce network consumption and also improve performance and scalability of any sort of distributed system. We also have things that will transparently happen within our file system, like compression, you can turn on compression, deduplication, and get all of those benefits without actually having to worry about configuring that within our own file system. Uh, In-memory caching is another feature that we have. So there's a lot of things that we're doing in our file system that help scale an infrastructure, an, an open stack infrastructure deployment. Now, how do we go about integrating Acropolis and, and some of the open stack technology? Um, we've actually developed uh, another VM, which we call our Acropolis OVM, that sits in between any OpenStack distribution and Nutanix. So you, you have this VM, and this VM is able to um, export a, a, a Cinder service and a Nova service and serve as an endpoint for those services. So you'll run an OpenStack VM, which we call an open, OpenStack controller, you can run one or many of those controllers, depending on the scale of your deployment. You'll run an Acropolis OVM, which handles the integration between the OpenStack APIs and our Acropolis APIs. And that'll allow you to use our file system as a resource provider for both Nova, Cinder, uh, Glance, and Neutron. 
Now, the OpenStack controller will continue to take the, the dashboard, the orchestration, quota management, user groups and roles, and SSO. So all of that looks the same. It looks like you're managing an OpenStack environment. You have, you have the OVM, which handles the integration. And then you have our cluster and NDFS, which, pro which provides all those basic uh, infrastructure services along with the features of the file system. Now this is just kind of a high level of what it looks like. Uh, you'll have your OpenStack controller. Um, that exposes all the OpenStack APIs. And then it does RPCs with our uh, VM, um, which exposes all those services and all the resources that we have within the Acropolis cluster. Now, in terms of how the different services break down and what VM holds primary responsible responsibility for each of the services, this is a map. So as you can see, the OpenStack controller uh, is responsible for Keystone, Horizon, uh, Swift, Glance, um, Heat, and all, all the other services. And with Acropolis and NDFS, we expose Nova, Cinder, Glance, and Neutron services through Acropolis. So the APIs look the same as uh, a resource provider for each of those services, even though on the back end within Acropolis, we're using uh, Nutanix technology to, to manage the, the clustering and the, also, the, obviously, the storage with our file system. Now, as you want to scale a deployment, like I mentioned, you can have more than one OpenStack controller VM. Uh, you can also have more than one Acropolis OVM. And if you want to scale it across multiple sites, you can use load, load balancers across multiple sites to run a multi-site deployment. As you want to add resources to Cinder or Nova, it's as simple as adding nodes to the Nutanix cluster. So we aut automatically discover, as you add nodes to the same layer two network, we automatically discover those nodes. You can go to our interface, uh, which is called Prism, add those nodes in, and we'll automatically register it as a resource uh, through Cinder and Nova so that you can run VMs, provision VMs, either through Acropolis or from the Horizon dashboard. So all of this uh, information we've actually made available. We have a site called the Nutanix Bible, which goes through all of our, uh, the details on our file system and on our technology. We're very transparent about uh, the function, functionality and features that we have. So we've written up our OpenStack integration uh, within the Bible. So if you're interested in more information about how Nutanix integrates with OpenStack, uh, we've made it available at that website, which is just NutanixBible.com. Now why, you know, OpenStack is capable of a lot of these things, a lot of, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of benefits towards using both solutions together and integrating uh, Nutanix with OpenStack. It gives you a very simple building block for building out your OpenStack environment. It's also something that we support. So we have a team, uh, we have support teams uh, located across, across the globe. We actually have one in Tokyo. Um, this is a solution that's fully supported by Nutanix. So as, as you deploy an OpenStack environment, we, we help you with the deployment, we help you with the integration, and it's easy to scale. Now, as I mentioned, with the, with the distributed file system, you get a lot of benefits that don't exist uh, in, in other uh, distributed file systems, including data locality, snapshots, uh, using our snapshot technology, uh, deduplication, compression, and other benefits of our file system. All right, so that's a summary of our uh, OpenStack integration. I want to leave five minutes uh, if anyone here, any, any folks in the audience uh, had any questions. Uh, we also obviously have our booth here um, at T, I think it's T70. And uh, if you're, uh, any questions from the audience about Nutanix or OpenStack, NDFS? Sure. For the SDN part? So um, networking within Acropolis, we've kept it very simple. Um, within Acropolis, you can create different VLANs. So you have VLANs, you have VLAN IDs. And then as you create VMs and their network interfaces, you can associate those with different VLANs. So it's a pretty simple networking model. 
the SDN side of it, like switch management and all of that, is not something that we take on. So you, you can use Neutron, you can use uh, Cisco ACI or uh, any other, you know, uh, NSX, NYSERA. Um, all those technologies can work with us because all that we need to run our system is a simple layer two network. So once you have a layer two network, it doesn't matter. Yes, because you can just run, you can run Neutron and whatever Neutron's capable of, you can do. So as long as you give our technology a layer two network at the end of the day, we can function. So we, we've kind of left it up to the customer to choose how they want to do networking. We haven't done a lot in that area besides uh, simple, uh, w when you create VMs in Acropolis, assigning those VMs to a VLAN. That's it. That's all you really have to do. We, we don't manage the network topology or do any layer three overlays or anything like that. Good question. All right. Any, yeah, so the, the way that we expose Acropolis to OpenStack is done in a way that it just looks like a Cinder or a Nova resource. Um, so you can use it with uh, whatever distribution. I mean, we've tested it with uh, Canonical as a you know, partner of ours, Ubuntu. Um, we, we like that distribution. We, we've had, we have customers using that integration. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we, we haven't found a distribution that doesn't work with this model yet. I, I can't say we've tested them all. Um, but certainly, we, we wouldn't preclude you from using any distribution, distribution that you wanted. Sure. How do you do backup? Um, so there, I mean, there's a lot of ways that we support backup or that folks do backup. I mean, there's snapshots, which isn't really necessary. The question was, how do you do backup with Nutanix? Um, there are third-party backup providers that work with ESX. Um, we're working with other third parties to develop integration with our KVM solution. So, I mean, some of the more popular ones, obviously, Symantec, Commvault, Veeam. Um, we're working to support all those solutions with Acropolis. We already support those with Hyper-V and uh, ESX where appropriate. All right, uh, any other questions here? I think I have about a minute left if anyone else has anything. We also have, if you want a pen, uh, and want uh, to get your badge scanned. Uh, we have some uh, reference material here um, that we're handing out. All right, well, uh, very excited to be here in Tokyo. I appreciate everyone for uh, listening to my presentation and uh, have a great week here. Thank you very much.